Do you guys get ads for Kegel trainers, pelvic floor trainers? Have you seen the Kegel shorts? Um, so I recently sent out an email to my email list and they, so many people opened this email and responded to it. Um, but why, 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 why are all these things out here and do they work? Um, so I cannot say that I've personally tested them, but I swear every week I get an email like, oh, we have the latest and greatest Kegel trainer. We have the latest and greatest pelvic floor trainer. Um, the Kegel shorts, man, when they came out, they were advertising hard. I got their ads on social media like every single day. So do they work? They obviously work for some amount of the population um, because they have a big budget. They're selling a lot of them. Um, they have studies behind them. But for a lot of people, they don't work. Those people end up in my clinic. So they already wasted $200 to $400 on these products um, because people are desperate for help. So I don't blame you as the customer or consumer if you've tried these. Um, the ads work, man. They, they work. They have big budget and they work. If I had that big a budget, my clinic would be like booming. Um, but I work in healthcare, so lovely. Um, anyway, so they obviously work for some amount of people, but for my clients, a lot of them have bought these products, they've tried these things, and they don't work. So why don't they work? Well, number one, the most common thing is they don't have muscle weakness. So any all those things, all those products, Kegel trainers, Kegel shorts, all of them, they're contracting the pelvic floor muscles a billion, million times, right? But if you have muscle tightness, we don't need to contract this muscle to get stronger. It's already too strong and too tight. So that's the number one reason those things don't work. So a pelvic floor therapist can examine your pelvic muscles and tell if they're too tight or if they're weak. Um, an OBGYN, they're not really trained in this. They might be able to tell you. Some of them will tell you like, oh, that's really tight. So what are some signs that your pelvic floor muscles are tight? You have pelvic pain. You can't have sex. When you get a pelvic exam at the doctor, it hurts. But sometimes even if you have bladder control issues, you can have tightness, not just weakness. So I see it most when it comes to bladder if my patients have bladder frequency, like they feel like they always need to go to the bathroom. If they have trouble like completely emptying their bladder, then often they have muscle tightness, not weakness. You know, in a, in a perfect scenario, we're not pushing out our pee, we're just relaxing and, and the pee comes out. Um, our muscles also need to relax to have any sort of penetration of, you know, a doctor's hand, a speculum, a penis, a toy, um, all those things. The muscles need to relax and expand. Um, so those are some signs of muscle tightness. But what if I have weakness and I've tried those things and they don't work? Well, number one, the things like the Kegel shorts, they're passive. So they're just like, brrr, like contracting your muscles a billion times. That's not functional. Um, I mean, I feel like in my lifetime, I've seen this product on repeat. Get your six pack abs, just hook up this machine and drrr, it's the same thing. Now they're just selling it for your pelvic floor. So does that work? Probably not. Again, it must work in some percentage of the population because this thing exists. Um, but also like in pelvic floor therapy, we're going to teach you how to control your muscles. So our pelvic floor muscles should mostly be automated, um, but we do have control over them too. So the machines, whether it's in Kegel shorts and a Kegel trainer, or like whatever, a Kegel chair at the doctor's office, like those don't teach your muscles anything. They're just passively like contracting the muscles. Okay. So in pelvic floor therapy, we're going to teach you how to control your muscles. We're gonna teach you how to contract it, how to relax it, when to do that, and how to make it more automatic again. So if you've tried those, I'm sorry if they've taken your money um, and they didn't work, I'm really, really sorry. Like some of that marketing 
feels really predatory to me. Um, and obviously, our healthcare system in America is in shambles. My patients right now are waiting four to six months to get an appointment with a new OBGYN. Like, it's it's an impossible situation. So I I, I feel for you as, as the consumer, as the patient, as the client, um, you're just looking for answers. So if you've tried those and they haven't worked, um, seek out a pelvic floor therapist. I also have an online course you can check out. You can, you can take my free bladder webinar to learn three ways to decrease your bladder leakage without doing Kegels. So Kegels are not also the end-all be-all of pelvic floor therapy. Um, we're going to integrate what your pelvic floor does into the rest of your body. And so that's also what you're going to learn in pelvic floor therapy or in my online course. Um, so I hope you find answers.